Baseball card collector may have really hit the jackpot. He discovered a valuable collectible from a company that no longer exists. Clear! A Babe Ruth card purchased for two bucks could now be worth millions. John Craig gives us a look. I don't want to grow up. I play baseball. I play football. I love sports. Dale Ball is aptly named. To me, this isn't a business. I mean, this is my life here. Originally from Port Byron, west of Syracuse, he knows about upstate winters. We knew the blizzard was coming. Now living in California, he helped a woman get snow chains off her car in snowy Nevada recently. As a thank you, she gave him an empty pack of cigarettes that contained several Broken Eagle Sacagawea coins. While later having it appraised, he noticed a rookie card of Brett Favre, the football player. And under it, something else caught his eye. A Babe Ruth made by a company he'd never heard of, Shotwells. He bought it for two bucks. Now it's worth millions. The card came up, the logo in a blog from Bob Lemke saying, rarest of rarities, more sought after treasure in the world has been lost to the world. One of one. And I about fell off my chair that I was sitting in. We showed his collection to the top guys at the Valley Cats. They too were amazed. A rare Mickey Mantle, Ty Cobb, Lou Gehrig, Honus Wagner. A stack of Babe Ruth cards worth more than 35 million. Um, a rare lemon peel baseball he got from Ty Cobb's grandson. I. Uh, his safe holds over a hundred million dollars in sports cards. Five. And if he sells his Babe Ruth, he won't forget that shop owner in Sparks, Nevada. Because that man made a mistake, God blessed my family and me, and I can do nothing less to bless that man back. Okay, to catch you up on some drama, we went to a card show about a week ago and we ran into a Dale Ball. We had never met Dale Ball before, but we had a funny interaction with him and he seemed like just another quirky card dealer at a show. That was until we received an email from the Jeff Wilson, who had his own encounter with Dale Ball at a trade night at the National about a year ago, where Dale Ball was allegedly trying to scam Jeff Wilson's kid out of some cards. Jeff Wilson even had to kick Ball out of trade night drama jeff wilson even did a video about the situation and here is a clip of that look like 99.9 percent .9 of the people that are in sports cards in that trade night and everything are good people but there is the 0.1 percent there are always going to be some people who unfortunately are going to steal or take advantage of doing bad trades and that's the type of thing you just need to be very aware and watch out for it. So after Jeff saw Dale in our video, he contacted us. We talked about the situation on our live stream the other night, and in doing so, some other sources came forward with more information about Ball. It turns out he's even scammed his local news stations. The clip you saw at the beginning of the video was Ball getting one of several news outlets to come interview him about a supposed rare Babe Ruth card. A Ruth card he bought in a Nevada card shop for $2. Ball thinks the card is real. The card is obviously fake. Ball claims that PSA and BGS don't know what they're doing, so he won't send the card to them. Misconceptions. It's easy for me to tell that Dale Ball is a low IQ individual. No, no, no. I think it's fair to say that he's also likely a scammer. I would guess that one out of every five individuals at a card show have characteristics similar to Dale Ball. So please be careful when you attend shows, especially with your children. Broader questions, are sports card radio and sports card investor BFFs now. Here's the thing. The people that thought we had real beef with Jeff Wilson didn't really know us that well. If you thought we had real beef with Jeff Wilson, you weren't aware of the 15 years of content we've put up over here at Sports Card Radio. Negativity. Jeff Wilson wouldn't even crack the top 10 of people we've had beef with over the years. We've been threatened to be sued countless times. We helped send the FBI to the National to subpoena card dealers, including PWCC. We were banned from the industry summit because of my tweets. The owner of Blowout Sports Cards has personally confronted me on camera twice. You can look that up. You can Google it. A six foot five college football offensive lineman that can't tell the difference between a boy and a girl wanted to beat me up at the national. None of these instances involve Jeff Wilson. If you really think we care about the cards Jeff has bought, the investments he has made, or the loans he's gotten, you're the one who probably needs a vacation. Five. Okay, we have a developing situation on Twitter involving a former announcer of the St. Louis Blues hockey team who is being accused of scamming people out of money for cards he never sent. Chris Harambe, 
has allegedly not sent a $4,000 1948 Jackie Robinson card and scammed other buyers as well. One person claims that Harambe even used a fake tracking number to keep the scam going. Oh, no. So we will be sure to keep you posted on what happens next. Personally, I do not know why people in this hobby do person-to-person -person deals when there are countless marketplaces that currently offer zero to no fees. Um. So I really don't actually get buying a $4,000 card from an individual and not using a marketplace. That's just me. But hopefully everybody gets their cards or their money back and the things work out in this situation. Drama. You will remember Shine, the person who famously sold a sealed case of first edition Pokemon cards authenticated by none other than BBCE to Logan Paul and inside turned out to be G.I. Joe cards. Yep. While Shine is a very well-funded individual, you can probably take some wild guesses where Shine got his money from and probably be correct. While Shine is offering a $1.5 million bounty for a one-of-one -one black rookie card of none other than Luka Doncic that is supposedly still out in the wild. Well, apparently in a well-timed marketing ploy, the long lost Josh Luber made a slightly higher offer for the card right after Shine made his proposal. My guess is that one or more of these individuals Shine or Josh Luber has boxes or cases to sell. What better way to sell some old product by drawing up some fake interest by offering these bounties? I think it's a good marketing ploy by Shine and Luber. Any interests that they have are probably selfish ones, but the Dale Ball types of this industry will eat out of those guys' hands. Didn't even know what to say. I there is a Topps conference down in Arizona. You'll probably hear about some of the cool things that Fanatics has planned for you. But what I would do is start making these companies start to prove themselves, especially fanatics. The expectations are so high and I doubt they will be met. <laughs> well, here's the same rhetoric from fanatics that they want to improve customer service. They want to improve quality control. They want to cater to collectors. When we know that deep down fanatics only wants to cater to backyard breaks and the little pool man crowd. Oh, no. Expect going forward that Fanatics becomes the real villain in the hobby and they're gonna catch a lot of blowback, I'm sure on social media and YouTube as well. Where you at, okay, I spent a lot of time over the last week buying cards and here are just some general observation. Buying cards on eBay is very clunky. It feels like I'm back in 2006. All of the auction houses, and I don't care which one it is practically, it's a far easier process to get off hundreds of bids to win multiple items. There is tons more inventory on eBay, but it is a far, far easier process to win stuff on sites like Golden or PWCC, for example. It's hard to buy large lots on eBay without worrying about large shipping costs. For example, I won these 2008 Press Pass Basketball Blaster Box, say that five times fast, sets for $84 total. There are 31 of them. That makes that $2.70 each. If I want to ship these to myself, it would be $1. Yes, $1. No other fees from the PSA vault where they are currently headed. So I could get these delivered to my house for about $2.75 each. Could I sell them for $5? Could I sell them for $10 each? Probably. That type of transaction, that type of deal, frankly, doesn't exist on eBay. But again, those are just my observations. So that's all I got for you today. And I'm sure we'll be back soon right here on Sports Card Radio. Baseball card collector gets a great deal on the great Bambino. Dale Ball scored big when he nabbed an ultra rare Babe Ruth baseball card at a Nevada store for just $2. The owner thought it was fake. Ball says an authenticator has since confirmed it's a rare 1921 card, possibly worth millions. I didn't even know what to say. I had tears start running down my face, to tell you the truth. You can't even imagine the feeling. Ball says if he decides to sell it, the collector who sold it to him will get a cut.